YouTube, what is good? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about this right here, my Canon P. I've had this camera for a minute, but it's finally time to actually give you a bit of a review and tell you how I feel about this camera. Now that I've been using it on and off for a few months. So I actually bought this camera to quote unquote replace my Canon 7. My Canon 7 was having some issues and also it didn't have a cold shoe and it's something that I really wanted so that I can stick a light meter on here. So I decided, you know what, let's go ahead and jump on this Canon P and see what it's all about. So Canon P's are actually fantastic buys right now. There's just so many of them out there because they were extremely popular back in you know the late 60s I think when they came out, don't quote me on that. Um, but there's so many of these that were made over time, I think in like the hundreds of thousands. And because of that, you can find them all over the internet and they're not you know, expensive at all. Actually, I'm not afraid that like talking about this is gonna drive this price up given that there's just so many of them. Most of them are based in Japan, which you know could be good or bad depending on where you are living. But the point is, you know, you can get them shipped out pretty quickly and they're usually in pretty good condition. Um, these are cameras that are definitely very repairable and there's a lot of you know parts out there and all of that. So I feel like you don't have to fear much when you buy these cameras about getting a dud or anything like that. So I bought this camera and I love using it so far. I think that's kind of just the moral of the story here. It's a fantastic camera. A couple things to say. First and foremost, this camera is a tank. I mean, you hold it in your hands and it feels incredibly durable. Um, there's just metal everywhere. This thing is, you know, could be a weapon. If somebody tries to steal it from you, you can hit them over the head with it and you're probably gonna be all right, and, but they're not gonna be all right. Um, but this, you know, is comparable to those other heavy duty rangefinder cameras from the time period. I think most notably Leica M3, which I think is the direct competitor to this camera. Um, obviously that camera costs, you know, a decent bit more as compared to this, but you know, that's kind of a different conversation. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about with regards to this camera is actually the mechanics and how it operates. Um, it's a fully manual camera, so there's no automation built into here whatsoever. And that's part of the experience. If you want, you know, auto anything, this is not the camera for you. But if you love the old school analog style of operation where you control every single aspect of the actual photography process, then this is a fantastic option for you. Obviously, you've got the, you know, the shutter speeds, the ISO determined by the film, of course. You have to do your manual focus here. You have to cock your film as well yourself. You know, you wind it forward and then of course, you know, hit the shutter yourself as well. There's no automation built into this whatsoever. So if you want anything, you know, aperture priority or metering or anything like that, this is not the camera for you. If you want something that's 100% end to end old school, meaning you control every single aspect of it, then this is definitely a fantastic option and I would recommend it a lot. It's just a joy to use, you know, this is kind of like the game of photography where you take your meter reading and then you control everything else based off of that. And if you wanna do Sunny 16, for example, if you wanna go out there and shoot at F16, you know, zone focus, this is that quintessential street photography camera because um, it operates, you know, kind of like those classic range finders that everybody uses, like the M3, things of that nature. So I highly recommend this camera on that basis. This is for street photography, probably best used. And then for casual walk around, you know, if you're traveling, if you're doing some light hiking, things of that nature, um, I wouldn't recommend it for anything else, such as portraits. Of course, you can do absolutely whatever you want, but I don't think that's the best use for this camera. Something else I really love about this camera is the rangefinder itself. I don't use it all the time, and that's because I'm a zone focused person when I'm out there in the streets doing my street photography thing. But if you want to use your rangefinder for whatever purpose, this is a fantastic one. I think it's much better than the Canon 7, and this is big and bright. It just really feels like, you know, the world is in there and you can see everything that's going on. And if for any reason it needs to be calibrated, this camera is designed to be calibrated pretty easily. I haven't done that myself, but I know there's YouTube videos that you can check out, or you can send it off to someone to do the calibration for you. But the, the rangefinder in here, the patches, and just the view, the screen, is great and I definitely appreciate it over the Canon 7. So there's one specific thing that I think is most important about this camera, and it is the lens mount. So this is an M39 mount, which is the old Leica mount. Um, these lenses are basically kind of very universal, let's say, and that M39 mount was used across various different camera body types. So of course Leicas, um, these Canon cameras, and some other cameras as well. The lens that I have on here is actually the Jupiter lens. That's the Russian made uh, lens and you know this Jupiter lens is actually quite affordable. I paid about let's say 80 pounds for this one uh, But I think they've probably gone up in price recently given that there just aren't so many of those out there There are of course Canon lenses that were made for this camera But those are actually a bit more pricey for some reason those things hold up a lot better 
in terms of price than the actual camera bodies. And I guess it's because those lenses work on a variety of camera bodies. But they're great lenses and you've got a whole range of Canon lenses, different you know, focal lengths and also different apertures. You can get a 3.5, 35 millimeter, for example, or you can get a 2.8. You know, in the 50 millimeter range, they have a 1.4, they have a 1.8. There's a lot of different options. For the Jupiter lens, the kind of the cheaper lenses, um, in the 50 millimeter range, I know they have like 54, 52, things like that. Um, there's a lot of options and those lenses are very, very affordable and out there in big numbers. The 35 millimeter lens, the one that I have here, this one's a bit harder to find as I mentioned. There's just fewer options out there and usually they're shipping from the Ukraine or from Russia, um, which in terms of imports and that kind of thing, you know, may or may not matter depending on where you're receiving the lens. But just something to keep in mind that lens wise, there's a lot of different options. Um, but if you want the cheaper route, it might be a little bit harder to do. Uh, nonetheless, the lenses are great. And this for being a cheap lens, I really love it. Uh, I've never compared it. I can't give you like, is it better or worse than anything else? But I just love how it pairs with, you know, the operation of this camera in terms of the zone focusing. The zones here are really big. And the resulting images have this really beautiful kind of antique touch to them. Um, I think the lens is fairly sharp. But, um, you know, it's just not like super clean or anything like that. It's something that I really like about this. Um, but again, that's the lens. That's not essential to the camera, but that's the lens. One interesting thing to note that I think is very specific to the Canon P and maybe one of the other Canon uh, rangefinder models, not the 7 though, is that this particular lens, the 35 millimeter one Jupiter, is actually doesn't fit very well in the camera. Um, you know, you can get it in there, you can rotate it and get it to kind of align properly and you can use it. But you'll notice that the lens is a bit tight when you rotate the lens element here to manually focus. And that's actually because the actual barrel that contacts the focusing and then the inside of the camera, um, it actually rubs against the inside frame of the actual aperture of the camera. That's not supposed to happen, um, but I think it's just a kind of quirky design flaw. And I haven't been able to figure out, you know, which serial numbers are the ones that cause problems. But from what I've been reading, not all Jupiter lenses that are 35 millimeter will have this issue. Um, some of them have the issue and some don't. Mine definitely does. But again, is this a humongous problem or not? You know, it's kind of up to you to decide. The lens is rubbing up against the inside of this camera, but it's a metal on metal rubbing. So you kind of see just a little bit of discoloration on the metal itself. It's not affecting the glass. The glass isn't getting scratched or anything like that. And contrary to what a lot of people say, there's a big curved element on the back of the lens. People say that that's gonna contact the actual shutter when it opens and closes. That's not true at all. That's never happened to me and I don't think it ever will because physically there's plenty of space for that. It's the actual kind of metal border that's around the elements that's scratching up against the top of the camera. So it's something that you know, you should consider, but if you can find the appropriate copy of the 35 millimeter lens, then you're not really gonna have any problems with that. As a whole, I really love this camera for basically all of the reasons. I think it's beautiful. You know, it has this really fantastic kind of retro look to it, but still has some really strong lines and it's, it's pretty clean. There isn't too much going on. That Canon logo is big and bold, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but you know, I think it has a bit of character to it, given that it has that kind of cool font from back in the day. But in general, I just love how minimalist the design is on here. You know, there's not tons of stuff going on, but there's some good hard lines and it just has a really badass character to it. So I love this camera for that fact. And I proudly wear this around my neck when I'm doing photography out in the streets. So if you're one of those people that really wants to buy a Leica, but you know, doesn't want to spend the money or you just don't have the money right now, uh, I recommend you check one of these out because they're durable, they're plentiful. They operate basically just like a lot of the Leicas that are out there, aside from some of those automatic functionalities. And they're just way cheaper. <laughs> for the price of this, you can buy, you know, three or four of these compared to the price of a Leica, depending on which one you get, which range, which manual, you know, film rangefinder you get. So definitely take a look because this is a fantastic value for the money. And I think you'll get a lot of props for this. It's not a Leica, you know, you're not gonna have that shiny brand around your neck. But this thing's cool. And when people see this, they're like, oh, hell yeah, I like that camera. So, you know, it's nice to, to get recognized for the style of your camera, as well as obviously your skill and the photos you're creating. But don't be shy about getting this. I think there's a lot of cool factor to this. And the hipsters and the nerds alike will definitely appreciate it. All right, so that's what I got to say about this camera. Go pick one up if you're interested. And until the next video, yo, I'm out.